the reason it's my number one is because it encompasses almost everything that we've talked about this off season when it comes to the offense, everything that we've talked about can be tied back to this one thing in some way or another. My number one, most important Buffalo Bills storyline for 2022 is Ken Dorsey as a first year offensive coordinator and play caller. Okay. Yeah. I see how this relates to mine. Yes. We've talked this off season and in this episode, Mm -hmm. we've talked run game. We've talked personnel usage. We've talked formations and alignments. We've talked positional flexibility. We've talked gap versus zone. We've talked tempo. We've talked dictating to the defense, all of these offensive related concepts and ideas and pieces on both a micro and a macro scale. And Mm -hmm. all of them can and will either be amplified and maximized or hindered and mitigated by Ken Dorsey and his impact positively or negatively as a first year offensive coordinator and play caller. We've got this team here in Buffalo led by Josh Allen with a true number one wide receiver with a, I don't even want to say budding, but potentially emerging top 25 ish wide receiver. Number two in Gabriel Davis, a potential, I would say Dawson Knox is already borderline top 10, if not already in it, but potential yeah, to yeah. Be top five, a good running back rotation, a budding, in my opinion, superstar potentially in Khalil Shakir with what he can do and yeah. what already he's, he's showcasing. Mm-hmm. You've got a team set up overall and especially offensively because the offense drives this team because, and really almost every team in the NFL because of the nature of the rules and how the game is played today. You've got a really strong recipe and formula offensively to win a championship this year. The Buffalo Bills are a Super Bowl favorite. That's no joke. That's no fluke. And I don't think it's being talked about enough that they've got all of these known quantities and high caliber players and position groups on the offensive side of the ball. They've got a really good combination of high floor and high ceiling individual players and position groups. And all of it is subject to the design and the whim of a person in a position in which he has never manned before in his mm-hmm. entire career. Ken Dorsey is a first year play caller, a first year offensive coordinator, and he is driving a car that has been tuned and designed to win the Daytona 500 <laughs> and win and, and win championships. And everything again, we've talked about, it all comes back to that. Like how he functions in play calling, how he draws up game plans, what he wants to attack, how he wants to attack it, what dials does he turn up and when and by how much? Is he turning dials from a 5 to a 10 or is it a 5 to a 6? Which ones is he lowering? When is he turning them up? Is he turning them up and lowering them drive to drive, play to play, half to half, quarter to quarter? There's When you break it down, there are so many intricacies and complexities to anything in the NFL, but especially Mm -hmm. being responsible for an entire side of the ball and calling the plays for it. We know the early returns are positive thus far. We are encouraged by what we've seen from Ken Dorsey. We are encouraged by what we've seen in training camp, what we've heard, what we've seen in the preseason. But once again, once the live bullets start flying, what do you get? What do you see? It's a different animal come regular season, real football. And to also push that even further, as we move further into the season, how does he adjust and counter once yeah. teams get a bead on this offense? Once there's game tape and sample size and yeah. tendency, how does he counter punch? How does he perform in the Jedi mind tricks aspect mm. of his role? Can he play chess at a high level week in and week out? What does he do come playoff time? We think this is the playoff team and it should be knock on mm-hmm. wood. Playoffs are so matchup based, right? Everything comes down to that. Your weaknesses are amplified and exposed come playoff time. And this is a team that has Super Bowl aspirations and plays in a league where it's not series-based. It's not best of three. It's not best of seven. It's not best of five. It's one and done. If you show up and you don't bring your best in a week in the playoffs, you're done. Even if you're the better team, even if you would have won that game nine out of ten times, it doesn't matter if you lose that one and that one is the first one. You're done. It's over. We have a first-year play caller an offensive coordinator commanding a ship that has been designed to win the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. That's a huge piece. And yes, the early returns are positive. 
and they're exciting. We like what we are hearing and seeing from Ken Dorsey, from the players, from the on-field perspective and off the field. Everything is right now, I think, trending upwards, trajectory upwards. Is it still in week five, in week Mm -hmm. six, in week 13, in week 14? And I think that's a huge storyline because again, everything ties back to that. Everything that everything that you talked about in your number one piece. Oh, who's, mm-hmm. gonna, who's wide receiver three this week? Oh, you know, how are they functioning? Is it a James Cook week? Are all three running backs dressing? You know, how much are they attacking down the field? How much play action are they going? How are they generating explosives? Like what kind of pass protection schemes are they cooking up? And also that ties in as well, right? Like if we can even add into that, you have such a new offensive coaching staff. Mm -hmm. for an offense that is designed yeah for championships ken dorsey is at the helm first year oc first year play caller aaron cromer new offensive line coach seasoned veteran but new to this team Mm -hmm. joe brady new first year with this team as the quarterback's coach you have all these new faces and pieces that have to work together and guide this team that has championship aspirations and there's not necessarily that holistic continuity within the staff i think again i think it'll be fine but I think it's something to watch for because yeah. these coaches have never coached together before. Mm-hmm. Ken Dorsey has never commanded an offense before. He's never been responsible for game plans and prep work and in-game adjustments and play calling and everything. Like how, how do he and Joe Brady play off one another mm-hmm. when, you know, shit hits the fan? Mm-hmm. How do they play off of Aaron Cromer? Aaron Cromer's had success as an OC. Do we get to a point where things are clicking with the offense until Aaron Cromer like has to, sit him down and be like, you need to do this. Like, cause he will, he's an assertive kind of guy. Mm-hmm. What do we see from Ken Dorsey in his role as a first year OC and play caller? It's my number one thing. It's one of those like all roads lead to Rome yeah. type of thing. Yeah. Every road on the offense somehow, some way comes back to Ken Dorsey. Even, and even if you think it goes to Josh Allen, Josh Allen's road goes still goes to, to Ken, Dorsey. Ken Dorsey. Ken Dorsey is patient zero. Yeah. for everything for this offense. And because this is an offensive league, because even though I'm a defensive guy, defenses still have to be built to beat the offense. Building a good offense is primary, you know, you know, MO number one, modus operandi. Like that's what you need is your function to drive a team and win a championship. And that's why it's my most important Buffalo Bills storyline for 2022. Yeah, no, that's a great one. Obviously, I don't really need to go into much detail on it considering how well you just described all of it and the pads all leaning leading to him and then also how mine was part of that too yeah, definitely but that's why i, I laughed wanna, when you picked yours i, I was know like, right oh, i knew this uh but i do want to focus on a couple of things that you organically sparked in my mind by the way we are at 90 when he said that it's doing okay. the thing again. i saw you checking something when i was yeah. speaking and i was like what is he reading okay yeah um more likes I am, Sorry, give us know. more likes. I uh, more. I think about that Star Wars gif of Kylo Red, where he's just like more, more. <laughs> it's not. It's never enough. I am curious. You kind of sparked this in my mind. How he's going to respond to adversity specifically? I, I think the continuity piece, him being here before, is obviously helping him with the transition. Um, just knowing all the guys, knowing everyone on the team, the players, most of the coaches. I think that continuity is a massive part and it's going to help him be more successful than he would have been otherwise early. But I also don't want this to get confused real quick, like that. I don't have faith in him or aren't you do, but I just think it's something to watch because it's very important. 100% a very important storyline. Glad you thought of it to bring this up as number one, honestly, um, very macro theme, but it, it draws a lot of attention. Um, I'm very, very curious how he responds to adversity specifically because you talked about how much responsibility he has over everything this year. Everything, like you said, funnels back to him. So when the Bills lose a game early, which they probably will do because the schedule is tough early on and he's a new offensive coordinator, I'm expecting a loss somewhere early in the season. How is he going to respond to that adversity? And is he going to take proper accountability because he is Mm. that dude now you know like how is he going to respond to that and how is he going to reflect that accountability onto the rest of the staff and the rest of his players that play for him is he going to take the ownership for the shortcomings and explain things how they could be better all of those little things to improve and grow on like like sean mcdermott always says like there's no losing there's only learning 
mm-hmm. stuff like that. How is he going to respond to that first loss when he has to take responsibility for it? And he is that head honcho that has to take responsibility for any offensive shortcomings. Yeah, that is, I'm, I'm really going to be focused on that now that you bring this up as this grand macro idea. That is the micro that I'm going to be focusing mm. on uh, within that. I, I think that'll be an interesting little subsect of that. I think this, again, I mentioned earlier, Matthew Kulik is on fire tonight. I think this is also a really interesting question as well. Uh, he says, so with a first time play caller, does he defer to what Josh wants given that he's battle tested? Does he give Josh more freedom to run the show? I think that's also something that yeah. I'm not necessarily worried about because as Josh has quarterbacks coached the last several years, that relationship is so tight and just to kind of give like some insight to usually like your position coach is the one that you go to, to like vent. So like if Alan had like Alan and Dable were close, but usually for like quarterbacks and their quarterback coach, like, you know, you have your install and you have the meeting. You're just like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then you go into the quarterback, the the quarterback coach. Yeah. You're just like, I hate that game plan. <laughs> this is terrible. Like blah, blah, blah. Like they have a good rapport. They mm-hmm. know each other, but I, so I'm not worried about like, how they play off one another. But I think this is a good question because like if push comes to shove, does Dorsey just defer to Josh or does Mm -hmm. he maintain the reins? Like, I think it's also a nice potential safety net to know that you've got Mm -hmm. a quarterback who knows what he wants, knows what he likes is very cerebral. He's very intelligent. You, and we, we know that from a multitude of reports, but even when you see it, you can see how he progresses and how he goes through his progressions and his reads on the field, especially with the type of progression passing that the Bills have. Josh Allen's a very smart player and a very smart quarterback. And then you add in the little things like all the checks and the alerts and mm-hmm. how he reads things pre-snap and how he adjusts post-snap. Josh is very smart. I think that's also a really good, you know, safety net or, you know, break glass in case of emergency option that you can defer to somebody who knows what he wants, knows what he wants called, but how those two play off of one another, Mm -hmm. I think is something to watch again, not in a negative way, but just something to keep an eye out for. Like we know Dable was an experienced play caller. Josh and Dable had their in game rapport when things were going good, when things were not, when things were neutral, we haven't seen all that happen yet with Ken Dorsey and Josh Allen. So I think we're going to see a lot of, I don't I think the rapport has been established, but we're going to see the execution piece and the working relationship, how it forms and how it functions as the season progresses. I don't think we have an answer to mm. this question right now. You can answer right. it based on what you want or what you think Dorsey or Allen should do. Um, that's a very good thought provoking question. I think we'll mm-hmm. see. I think that's one of those like time will tell. 